This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Do you think it's possible to create really realistic work with children's crayons? So I tried crayons a little while ago and you guys loved it and I thought I'd come back to try a completely different skin tone so let's go. Hey people it's Temi if you're new here and I love to challenge myself on this channel and I'm nervous but let's go. Here are the crayons I'll be using today. They're both from Crayola and I've got the Colours of the World set and the one with the regular colours. The Colours of the World set has loads of different skin tone shades, such a great variety and here are the swatches going from light to dark and grouped in rose, almond and golden. And here's the regular set, so I really love using this bright set with the portrait set because all the extra colours will really help the artwork to pop. It's been a while that I've used crayon so I just want to play around with it again. Obviously it's very different from using colouring pencils and I'm just going to practice some blending with it to remind myself of how much work I'll need to do to get to realism making sense with crayons. So if you saw my last crayon video you know that I did dark skin so in this video I want to try light skin. So I'm grabbing some of the lighter colours and just blending them together and just layering gradually and I'm adding some depth with the medium deep golden and also this rose tinge. The layering looks like it's going okay but I can see a lot of the white of the page through and I don't like the fact that I can see the texture of the paper. So I'm going to grab a solvent, this is the Zested Pencil Blend, by the way all my supplies are linked down below as usual. And I'm just applying a little bit of it, I started by applying a minimal amount and rubbing it, someone said this in a comment. But i rather use a generous amount of solvent, so that's what I'm doing. Something to bear in mind is that the solvent seems to lighten the pigment but of course that's fine because you can just layer more pigment back up. Another thing I want to try is to use a tool to try to preserve some of the whites. So I've got some dotting tools in this nail art brush set. I don't think any of these were intended for art but to be honest it looks like it could do the job. And I'm just drawing random shapes and the idea is to see if the indentations will remain after I layer some more crayons over the top. Me trying this is just to see if it will help me to preserve the details so I'm going to do a very detailed sketch but I don't want to lose all of the details I put into my sketch when it's actually time to colour. Okay cool, so with the second circle I want to try a bright blend, so I'm thinking of drawing eyes in this video and I want to try a green blend. So I'm starting with this yellow colour as the base and then adding some of the lighter green and then the darker green and then the blue. And it's interesting because when you layer and you're gradually adding each colour, the next colour feels like it's way 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 too dark, but actually if you just keep going and you add your darkest colour, everything else feels more like it's in context. I hope that makes sense but the lesson here is just to be brave when you're layering because compared to the white of the page everything is going to look like it's way too dark but if I'm trying to achieve nice contrast in my piece then I need to make sure I've got enough lights and darks. I'm just trying the white crayon to see if it actually does any blending and it looks like it's not doing a single thing. So that's not very useful but I'm going to use the solvent again and it really helps to blend the colours nicely. It just fills in the whites of the page, you know the texture that we can see through. And as you can see it's so easy to layer the blue and the green back up to a nice vibrant point. Now we've got all of this test out of the way, here is the reference picture I'll be using today. I have linked it down in the description box in my Pinterest board. But before we get on with the drawing, here's a quick word from our sponsor, Squarespace. As some of you may know, I recently became a full-time artist and I'm currently in the process of putting my new website back together. I think it's important as an artist or other creator to have a good website to use as a portfolio to show your work and services. Squarespace is a great platform that allows you to create a beautiful website. They have tons of templates to choose from and they're very easy to customise. The automatic image scaling feature allows you to easily add images and videos and it's also very easy to connect to your social media pages. If you want to get your own website, go to squarespace.com for a free trial or when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash temi to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you Squarespace for once again supporting my channel and let's get on with the drawing. I've already done the sketch on a separate bit of paper. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I love to do that. I can make mistakes, I can erase, I can do this and that. And then when I'm ready and happy with the sketch, I can transfer it. So I'm using a graphite transfer sheet. But if you don't have one, you can just shade the back with a soft pencil and then trace over the drawing like I am. 
The benefit of doing this over sketching directly in my sketchbook is that first, if I make any mistakes, I can retransfer the sketch to another page. But also here, I'm just keeping the lines that I want to keep. So I won't have all of the extra feathered lines that I would normally have in the sketch. I'm just going over it in a biro and just getting the basic outline of this eye. And okay, let's see the sketch transfer. So this has come out really, really dark. Just gonna quickly lighten it and we're ready to start coloring. So before I start actually, you would have seen in some of the tests earlier that I use this dotting tool to try to preserve some of the details. So I'm gonna try that again. And the idea behind this is so that when I start coloring with the crayons, I don't lose all of these details and sketch lines that I have. I'm not sure if this is the best technique, honestly, because technically these bits are gonna be left white. And for something like the lashes that need to be black or dark brown, I don't really wanna be fighting with the white of the paper, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. After gathering all of the detail in the lashes, thinking about the reference, it seems to have a lot of detail in the actual pupil of the eye. So there's kind of white that I can see through it. And so because of that, I think I'll also do this exact same technique. So just drawing lines from the pupil and this will mean that it will preserve those whites so that it just adds an extra bit of detail without too much effort. Okay, now coloring time. I'm sure it's the time you've all been waiting for. But honestly, I'm a little bit nervous about this whole eye drawing, if I'm gonna be real. If you saw my last one, which was of lips, that one came out so nice that I think I just put so much pressure on myself for this one to also come out good. You know, crayons are children's art supplies. They're not meant to be used to get an insane amount of detail and blending. The reason I'm doing an eye today even is because with a big eye like this on my sheet, I can get a lot more detail compared to if I was doing a portrait. But give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you want to see me try a complete portrait next time. So I'm just layering the yellows and greens and blues for the eye. And you can see the effect of the detail tool that I used earlier. All of those whites are preserved. And as I continue to layer more, it just helps to enhance the drawing. At this point, I'm actually quite pleased with the blend and the kind of abstract look. I think it's just looking really nice all together. And I know I used a solvent in my tester earlier. I think I'll probably use that for the skin, but for the pupil, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. And now we get into the more difficult part. So I started with the pupil because to me, that was gonna be the easiest bit to get down. But the white of the eye, I'm sure you know that it's not complete white. There's gonna be some gray shadowing because of the eyelids. There's gonna be reflections, they're gonna be pinks. So all of that means this is gonna be very difficult. The main Crayola pack does have a gray, but the gray is pretty dark. So I'm not trying to apply too much pigment. And I've actually decided to move away from the inside of the eye. And I think I need to color around the eye and the skin because that will help me put the drawing more into context. If I don't take a step back to do this, I could end up going way too dark with the gray. Crayons are a difficult medium to use and I don't know how to lift back colors. So my idea here is just to work gradually, gingerly, small, small and build the layers as I go on. In the reference picture, I can see some skin texture. So I'm just using the dotting tool again. I really like the effect it did for the pupil. So I'm using the dotting tool again, just to draw some squiggly lines so that again, when I color in the skin, some of the whites can just peek through a little bit just to add another level of detail. And now for the skin. The person in this picture has makeup on. There's almost this eyeshadow blend towards the outer corners of the eye. So I've already marked that with the deep rose color, but I'm just trying to apply the light crayon colors little by little. I want to do as much layering as I can before I use the solvent. The solvent would just help to merge the colors and I'm only using one layer of solvent by the way. So from the testing, I remember that the solvent lightened the colors. So I'm also trying to be bold with the colors that I'm applying. And you can see that I'm adding some oranges into the crease of the eye. Things like that will really help. The Crayola Colors of the World set is a great set. It has loads of different shades, covers a wide range of skin tones, but the reality is that using those by themselves, it's not going to give me the depth that I really want. So I'm adding in some reds, I'm adding in some purples. If you're familiar with my channel, this will not come as a surprise to you at all. But I'm just trying to gradually build up, but also not trying to go too dark because obviously this is light skin. So it's a tussle between having enough pigment down, but also just not going too dark with the skin tone. 
Okay, now I think I'm happy with the amount of pigment I had down. So I'm just gonna use a solvent to blend the colors out. And I'm starting from the lighter areas and then slowly working towards the darker areas. I actually left the drawing overnight because the solvent needed to dry before any more crayons stick over the top. The reality is the solvent is great, but it definitely flattens the drawing. So all of those extra colors, I'm really going in with the oranges, the reds, the purples, the blues for the darker areas in a bit. And the drawing is kind of in the ugly phase, but it will definitely pass through. The thing about the ugly phase is you have to see the end vision. You can't focus on what you can see before you, but you just have to see past it and see the vision. Because our eye does not have lashes, it's going to look weird for a long time. <laughs> but you have to think and really do everything that will go on underneath because lashes needs to be one of the last things that you do. And at this point, I'm pretty happy with the skin. I really like the texture that I can see coming through. In my other crayons video, people were giving me advice to scrape it off, to do this and that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I think that's fine and that's all good and well if that's how you want to use your crayons. But I find scraping it off and doing things like that just makes it look ashy. I'm so sorry. It makes it look really faint. And if you're familiar with my channel, you know I like striking, opaque, vibrant drawings. So I'm not going to do that. I like the texture as I can see it and I'm just going to use my white pen to add some of the sharpest highlights. Adding the sharpest highlights is usually my favourite part of the drawing because this is just really what makes it pop. Now the eye is really looking good. I just love how it really brings the eye together and the next thing I need to think about are the eyelashes. This really kind of scares me because I do just want to use crayons. I know I just used a white pen but I can't come and die. Initially, I was thinking of using a black pen, like a fine liner or a brush pen, just anything to help with the lashes. This is what I normally use for my color pencil drawings anyway, but I just thought I'd try my hand at actually using the black crayon. So the black crayon at this point is a little bit blunt, it's not very sharp. Sometimes I use the back flat end of the crayon. And luckily because this lady has makeup on, so it's kind of like she's got mascara, so some of her eyelashes are clumped together. And that kind of works because of the thick vibe I've got going on, but my crayon just snapped. I can't believe it actually finally happened. This is literally taking me back to childhood. Clearly, I'm pressing on it too much, but it is what it is. I think someone asked me in the last video how none of them snapped. Well, here you go. <laughs> and now it's time for the finishing touches. And can you believe this eye was created with Crayola crayons? It's actually a little bit crazy for me to comprehend time for the most satisfying part taking the washi tape off to see the clean edges and r.i.p to my poor paper because what, <laughs> what kind of edge is this <laughs> i actually tried the hack where you blow dry the washi tape so that the heat helps it to come off but clearly it didn't want to work for me today and we are done i am pleasantly surprised by how this turned out and it was really quick too it only took around two and a half hours to do don't forget to use my squarespace code and i'm sure you love this video next